you can search for schools on the provincial sites so if you are planning to school in ontario for instance you can go to like ontariocolleges.ca aside from your tuition and all your expenses being fully funded you would also be getting monthly pay hey guys you're welcome to my youtube channel if you are new to this channel if it's your first time watching a video Thank you so much for joining my channel. Please consider subscribing down below by hitting the subscribe button down below and be sure to turn the post notification bell on as well so you can get notifications each time I post a new video. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for joining again. You know the vibes. Give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below and don't forget to share with your friends. In today's video, we'll be talking about studying in Canada. Actually, this is going to be like a series in four parts. I'll be covering finding schools in Canada, how to obtain your study permit, working as a student in Canada, and finally getting your postgraduate work permit. That will be all we'll be covering for studying in Canada. But before we get into today's video, I'd like to let you guys know that I've written a book which covers 15 top immigration pathways to come to Canada. Oh my god, I'm really really excited about this publication because it's my first and I worked with a very very strong team that put in their best effort as well as I did to make sure we produce the best content for you guys. So um, you can consider getting one for yourself or sharing with your friends that would need one. It's about 15 top immigration pathways to Canada. I'll link it down below. You can get yours and you can as well advise your friend or encourage them to get a copy as well. So without further ado, let's jump into today's video, you know? So in today's video, we'll be covering finding schools in Canada. How do you choose the right program? How do you choose the right school? What are those things you need to look out for? Affordability, uh, program costs, reviews, feedbacks, and all of that. Before we proceed into this video, I'd like to let you all know this. I don't know how to put this though, but it's very necessary to state this, that schooling in Canada is not cheap. That's just the reality of the situation. Schooling in Canada is not cheap. Um, this is not to discourage you. This is just to set your expectations so you know what you're looking for. And if you're looking for maybe really, really cheap schools, you probably want to look out for schools in Europe or you should consider applying for scholarship programs in Canada if you really want to come here. Aside from that, schooling in Canada is not really cheap and it's affordable anyway. And you know, affordability is relative. Something that is affordable to one might not be affordable to another. I don't think you can find any school in Canada that costs less than 10,000 grand. That's 10,000 Canadian dollars. So, and I don't think that's cheap either for international students precisely. But let's get to it. How do you find school in Canada? So there are two major ways and the first way is for you to find school on the provincial site you can search for um on you can search for schools on the provincial site so if you are planning to school in ontario for instance you can go to like ontariocolleges.ca i'll link all these provinces or the ones i'm aware of the ones i know i'll leave them down below so you guys can check them out you can also check for like bccolleges.ca or ontario universities and all of that you can you can go to the provincial site to look for a university or a college of your choice Another easy way which I always recommend to people aside from the provincial site is for you to visit Google. Like it's it's just the best resource out there. You need to make maximum utilization of the Google search. You just need to type in this school in Canada or you want to study this in Canada or what are the affordable schools in Canada. Depending on the province you want to go to, you would find a list of different schools. That's another way to find schools in Canada. So two major ways, finding schools on the provincial website and a simple Google search. The next thing I'll be talking about here is how can you apply for a program. So this is, as you, this is me assuming that you've been able to find a school that you want to go to or you want to apply to. After you've been able to identify the school, then the next thing is for you to apply for a program. So once you have decided on which program you want to apply for, you can apply on the institution's website. So say for instance you're going to University of Ottawa, you just go to U of T or University of Ottawa's website and search for the program. Look out for how you can apply and submit your application. You can apply on the institution's website and you can also apply on the provincial website. So if you want to apply to multiple schools especially, instead of applying directly on the institution's website, you can consider applying through the provincial website. This will allow you to apply for multiple institutions at a time and this can also allow you to 
pay lesser fees for the application so if you would have to pay hundred 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 dollars for each of the application on three schools you can apply on the provincial website and you may just need to pay just one depending on the school anyway so after you've been able to identify a school and you've seen how you can apply for your program before you even apply for the program you want to know which program to go for i have been able to put out some points that you need to look out for when you are choosing a program which is very very important i believe if you look out for these factors that i'll be mentioning um, and you take them seriously, you will be able to find a good program all by yourself without even needing the support or help of any other person. So the first thing is for you to look out for the English requirement of that institution. So different schools have different English requirements for international students. So if you're applying to school in this school or that school, they can have different requirements. At the end of the day, they just want to know that you can communicate in English, you can learn and study in English language, or if you are French speaking, you can study in French as well. So if the school requires English tests or English assessment, if you had studied in an English speaking country, or your program high school or undergraduate degree was taught in English language you can provide English as a medium of instruction I'll link some of the templates down below so you can check them out um, so if you're able to provide the medium of instruction letter to the institution they may be able to waive that requirement for you some schools also offer English language waiver for students that come from English speaking countries so if your country is English speaking you might get a waiver for the requirements for the English assessment. That's another way to go about it. And the third way also is for you to go ahead and take the English test. Some schools will mandate you that you have to take the test regardless of whether you studied in English, whether the official language in your country is English. They might still insist that you should take the English test. So if the school requires for you to take the English test regardless, you can go ahead and take the test. It's not that complicating. Um, most of the time, most schools will require for you to get 6.5 in academic IELTS. Some schools also accept TOEFL as well. The fourth way is for you to take a mandatory course in your first year. That's assuming that you're able to gain admission and you get into that school and get your study permit and all that. You might be mandated to take a course in your first year that would be for like basically English. And I wouldn't really recommend this, but if you have no other choice or maybe you're not very sure about going to that school and you don't really want to take the IELTS test until you're sure that yes, you'll be getting your study permit and you'll be schooling in that school, then you can take that option. But this is the most expensive route. This is because you'll be paying for that course and you'll be having like your in your first year you'll be having other courses that you need to do and this is like an extra load on you so if you can just take the english test that'll be best if you are able to get a waiver for it that'll be awesome as well the second thing on my list that you need to look out for is how is this institution funded so if it's a privately funded institution or a publicly funded institution so publicly funded institutions are the ones that are funded by the government It's just typically what it means so if it's funded by the government then you can apply for postgraduate work permits with this with any program you study in this course provided it's more than eight months although i can understand that some private schools might be cheaper than the public schools However, the standard of learning in both schools differ as well, but most of the time, I would always encourage you or advise everyone to go for publicly funded institution. The next thing you need to look out for when you're choosing a program is to choose a program that you're really, really interested in. Don't go for a program that you have minimal interest in or you don't think would fit into your long-term goals. Because firstly, it's just a waste of time, right? And secondly, you would not be able to really convince the immigration officer why you're choosing this program. So it's very important for you to look out for this. Go for a program that you're genuinely interested in and ensure that it's something that is in line with your long-term goals at the end of the day i understand that some of us we are not really sure about what we want to do with the rest of our lives but it's quite understandable but still you should go for a program that you are most interested in or you are very interested in at that time anything can happen at the end of the day later on in the future but in the current state like at this time ensure you apply for a program that you are very much interested in the fourth thing you need to look out for when you're applying for a program or when you're choosing a program is the cost. Like, this is the, even the most important one of it. 
you need to identify how much this program would cost you so if the program is for two years you want to know oh is it going to cost me 30 grand is it going to cost me 35 grand how much in total would you need to spend to complete this program this includes the tuition fee the living cost the your insurance that's your health insurance and other kind of expenses living expenses and all of that you need to take that into consideration and decide or determine how much it will cost you to complete this program if it's something that you can afford then you should go for it but if it's something that you think you might be struggling you might look out for other ways maybe getting student loan or maybe going for a one-year program or a two-year program as opposed to going for a three-year program if you are like under tight financial budget but if you're also a very sound and smart student you can also look out that oh maybe i could get a scholarship by the end of my first year or maybe if i get a part-time job or something that will be able to take care of some of my expenses but these are just some substitute things that you should consider but the first thing is ensuring that you are able to take care of your expenses regarding the tuition and other costs for completing this program. Number five on my list is for you to consider going for a program that has the co-op option or internship. If you don't know what co-op means, it simply means cooperative. I don't know why they choose that terminology, but it means cooperative and it's like an internship. So maybe middle of your program or at the end of your program, you'll be allowed to take a one year, six months, three months internship. This method of learning is great because it allows you to combine the classroom experience and real work environment. So you are able to apply what they teach you in the classroom and what you have learned on the job into like this is like an extra way to gain more knowledge and skills regarding that chosen field or that career path you have selected and by the time you get out there to the job market it counts as your work experience it also like employers will really like to see that you have gained knowledge on the job not necessarily just classroom because sometimes what you were taught in classroom isn't necessarily what you meet on the job so if you can go for courses that has the co-op option then definitely go for it the sixth factor for you to consider when you are choosing a program is the length of the program. Some programs could be for a year, some programs could be for two years, some could be for four or five years. It depends on if you are going for maybe an undergraduate, a postgraduate, a postgraduate certification, a master's degree, MBA, all of that program. It depends on what the program is. So the length of the program also counts. So if you are going for a two-year program, you know you'll be paying tuition fee for two years. If you are going for a five-year program, you'll be paying tuition fee for five years. This in some kind of way impacts the cost. Also, the length of your program impacts how long or how many years of postgraduate work permit you will be getting. The next factor I have on my list here is for you to look out for the program type. So if you are going for a master's program, for instance, let's say uh, there are two master's programs, there are two kinds of master's program. There is like the thesis base or thesis base as people like to call it, which is research. And the other one is course based. So if you are going for a program that is course based, this is just for you to complete like your entire courses and um, take your exam, take your test, take your classes, pass the um, pass your exams and you graduate with a master's degree if you are going for the research based program that's the thesis based you would be required to complete like a project and until the end of that project before you would be able to earn your master's degree the type of program also affects how you apply so if you are going for a course based program you just need to follow the requirement or the admission requirement on the institution's website but if you are applying for a research based program or a thesis based program you would have to ensure you get a professor first and the professor has to have interest in your course and that's the topic you are trying to work on that's the only way they would say oh yeah i want to work with you then if they are safe to work with you lucky you you'll be getting your tuition funded like it's mostly fully funded if it's like a research based work the professor accepts to work with you then you can apply for admission to that institution that's the way it works then aside from being fully funded you also get some stipend getting monthly stipend from that professor that you're working with and once you gain like once you are able to get like a professor that is interested in your program then it's almost guaranteed that you can gain admission from that school like that's the mandatory requirement once you have been able to get a professor getting admission would not be very challenging and getting your study permit as well would not be so challenging because like it's fully funded right they don't need to worry about um you financing it or all of that you just need to cover other aspects of the study permit that the visa officer wants to see 
so the program type also matters so you need to consider are you going for a research based program or are you going for a cost based program after you've been able to decide on the type of the program you want to go for the next thing is for you to look out for like feedbacks ratings prospects of that institution some institutions are renowned for like science based programs so if you want to study like a business kind of program in that institution it's very important for you to look out and check to confirm that people that have schooled in this institution would recommend it for commerce based program or business based program this is very very necessary because it would affect your long-term prospect outside there when you're looking for job in the real job market i mean and as well it would also like affect you when you're schooling there so even if you gain your admission and at the end of the day you're in this school what's the whole point if you can't gain the knowledge that you want to gain for going to school like there's no point so ensure that you look out for schools that are well recommended for those specific program look out for the ratings of the school and look out for the ratings of that program in that school you can check for this kind of ratings from the internet very easily you can check on the institution website you can as well check on linkedin as well so when you go on linkedin and you search for people that have studied um accounting in um, Brock University, you can see from their profile that, oh, is this person gainfully employed? And then you know, oh, okay, maybe there is good prospect for graduates of this program in this institution. See what other people are saying about that program from that institution. It's very, very important for you to do that. Another factor that you can look out for, this is not really, really mandatory, but it's just necessary for me to put this out there. So if the institution has like transfer programs or like exchange program, that would be nice as well. It's not mandatory, it's just going to be nice. So transfer program would allow you to transfer from one school to another. Maybe you want to complete like one semester or maybe you like when you're doing your co-op in another city or another province you can complete one semester or one year in another school you can also look out for that and some schools would also allow you to do exchange programs with other countries outside of canada and that way you're able to broaden your knowledge you're able to learn in a different environment in a different country in a different culture and probably a different language if they are not english speaking or maybe they have a different method of teaching that way you are able to learn something new and it's actually very 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 good that's pretty much it for the factors you need to look out for when you are choosing a program speaking of which i get many requests that i should do a video on affordable schools in canada so um affordability is relative like i've said earlier and for you to find schools that are cheap um you need to look outside for provinces that are less populated less busy um like if you want to school in province like ontario it's very very expensive like 100 percent is expensive u of t those high ranking institutions are very very expensive period if you want to school in like provinces like british columbia as well it's very populated it's high ranked and it's going to be expensive as well you might want to consider going to provinces that are less populated or less expensive or maybe any of the territories as well you can consider like Atlantic canada or you can consider any of the three territories there are usually cheaper institutions there so you can look out for schools there don't forget the first thing i mentioned in this video which is maximizing the usage of google search it's like the most important tool that you would need for this so once you've been able to find the school ensure that you choose the right program and once you have choose the right program you would also see how you can apply for admission to that institution it will be listed on the institution website don't forget to ensure that you check for the cost of the program before you go ahead and submit your application you don't want to apply to a school that when you gain admission then you now see that can't have for the school fees or you can't proceed like it's can be very very heartbreaking and sad so ensure that you look out for everything i've mentioned in this video and once you have taken note of that then if you think it's something you can work with then you can go ahead and submit your application for admission in the next video we'll be talking about obtaining your study permits writing your statement of purpose and other very important things you need to complete for you to study in canada anyways that's pretty much it for this video if you learned something new don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you like this video and you're yet to subscribe do so right away subscribe down below don't forget to share with your friends if you have questions for me as well don't hesitate to leave them down below in the comment section i'll be more than happy to take your questions that'll be pretty much it guys don't forget to subscribe i'll see you all in my next video in the meantime you know stay confident Bye.